Okay, I think we are on. Hi, everybody. I'm just going to uh, check on my iPad over here. Make sure it's all good. There we go. All right. Hi, guys. Okay, I'm just going to make sure everything's connected good. Wait for everybody to jump on. All right, anybody out there? Hello, hello. Looks. What's up? Is the volume okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Hi, guys. Can everybody see and hear me okay? All right, shows a couple people on. Hello, hello. All right, so let me know if everything looks good and sounds good. It shows my audio jumping up and down there as I'm talking, so we should be okay. Just let me know. Awesome, awesome. I'm so excited for today's project. Hey, Emily, how are you doing? Okay, today we're going to get into the holiday spirit. I am so excited for the holidays coming up quick. Can't even believe they're here already. Hey, Jackie, how are you? Awesome. Emily says you can see and hear me. Fantastic. I'm going to pop my ice mold. My ice mold's kind of preheating, but I want to pop it in here and just make sure it's nice and melted. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Kez. Thanks for watching. Everybody write where you are watching from in the comments if you would like to. We can get to know each other. Hey, Sharon. How's it going? All right. All right. Okay. So we still got a couple minutes. I came on just a few minutes early to make sure everything was going good. So we'll get ready to get started here in a minute. I have my ice melt melting here in the microwave. About 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it is a liquid. So if you're going to be playing along today, let me know in the comments because I would love to know and uh, you can go ahead and preheat your ice melt. If you want to do the ice melt version, I'm going to be talking about doing uh, the same thing in lots of different uh, edible mediums from ice melt to cookie to modeling chocolate to fondant and gum paste. So you'll have some different options of how to create this project for yourself if you decide to give it a try. All right, Terry is in Southern California. It's warm today. Oh, that's awesome. It's not too bad out here today. It's been getting a little bit cooler. I think it's around 75 and cloudy. Hey, Patricia. All right. Hey, Evelyn. Oh, good. You're playing along. I can't wait to see your cornucopia. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Awesome. This is going to be super fun today, guys. I have my little cornucopias over here that I can show you. I took the sprinkles out just so I could lift them up and, like, show you guys the shapes of them a little bit easier without it being stuck to a board. But I'll show you how to um, fill it with your different fillings. We're going to make some little cute decorations, too, with our fall harvest mold. Um, so one of our newer molds, if you can see that once it adjusts has some pretty leaves and some pumpkins and sunflowers and corn and things on it. So um, we're going to make some decorations to go inside of this. And then I also have my cookie version here that I created. So this little guy is out of sculpted gingerbread. So you can also make them out of cookie if you wanted to. You can see I just gave it a little bit of dust just to give it that kind of rustic shaded look. So you could totally make these out of cookie and then fill them with other cookies or fill them with little chocolates or decorations. would be super duper cute. Let me set him over here so he doesn't fall down. All right. Oh, there we go. It was hiding the comments from me. Uh, yeah, it's been raining in South Florida, too. Yeah, it's been raining here the last couple days, or at least kind of misty. Uh, let's see. We'll wait about one more minute, and we'll go ahead and get started. Like I said, I just um, have my ice melt preheating in the microwave for 30 seconds and then 15-second intervals today. Um, so I did have an accessory kit that it goes with this project, so it's still up on my website if you're interested in um, recreating these for the holiday season. And uh, those are online uh, on my website, but you can use what you have as well. We're going to be using a copper ice melt today, a really pretty shimmery copper, but you could use bronze. You could use just a nice, um, pretty, uh, like, matte brown, whatever you wanted to do. 
And so, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started with that. We're also going to be using our Simi Cone Former today. So this is our silicone cone former. I use these for lots of different things. I have tons of tutorials on my page and on my YouTube and in my past um, playlist of live streams that I've done on YouTube as well because I keep all of these and I upload them to my YouTube. So if you ever miss one, uh, you can easily reference them there. And I use this for lots of different things for like flower formers and things, but we're going to use this to create the form for our cornucopias today because it's the perfect size. So we're going to be using that. And then, uh, like I said, we're also going to be using our mini um, fall harvest mold here, but you could also use whatever mold that you wanted to, or you could fill it with different little desserts if the lighting would adjust. There we go. You can fill it with different little desserts, you can fill it with chocolates, fill it with cookies, whatever you wanted to. It would also be really pretty if you're going to be making these more for like the Christmas season rather than Thanksgiving in um, just a couple days here in the States. You can make these and fill them with like pretty poinsettia flowers or some like snowflakes kind of falling out of it, make it more like an icy um, sort of harvest would be really, really pretty. So you could definitely tweak these for different things depending on what theme that you want to go for. All right, just trying to look at my comments here. There we go. All right. Hey, Donna. Hey, Tenia. All right. We'll go ahead and get started then since everybody is here. Um, so thank you so much for watching. First of all, um, I'm Sydney Galperin, the owner of SeeMeCakes.com here. And uh, I'm going to be showing you how to make these cornucopias out of isomalt and also talk about using cookie and using gum paste and modeling chocolate and all of that fun stuff to make some really nice um, Thanksgiving decorations. It is almost Thanksgiving here in the States. Uh, it is this Thursday. So happy Thanksgiving to any of my fellow uh, U.S. Uh, friends out there. And um, I just thought it'd be really fun to do kind of something to kick off the holiday holiday season with these cute little cornucopias. So they're just cute little mini guys here and this one's made out of ice malt so that's what I'm going to show you first. I'm going to tilt my camera down so that you guys can see my workstation and we will get started. All right, let me just make sure that's all perfect. So you guys know if you have any questions please feel free to put it in the comments. Uh, Mom is here too. She'll be watching out the comments so that we don't miss anything. If you guys have any questions at all please feel free to ask and if you're watching the replay or um, you know you guys think of questions later you guys know you can always message me too on my Facebook here or Instagram or email and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Hey Carol! Hey Joelle! Alright. Awesome. So, like I said, we're using our Simi ice mold today. This is a clear bag, but it's going to be the same idea. It's all pre-cooked and ready to use in these individual tiles. So all you have to do is melt it down for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it's a liquid in the microwave. When it's, once it is a liquid, you can um, either use a pre-colored, which is what came with the accessory kit for this project, uh, the copper color that we have, or you can use the... Um, uh, colors to actually mix your own. So if you wanted to make your own coppery color, you can use some airbrush color or you can use some powdered color like luster dust, just no gel color. You don't want to mix gel color in the ice malt, but you can use any liquid or powder. Or yeah, and don't forget to share guys too. I saw mom just wrote that in the comments. Thank you. Um, don't forget to share this with all of your sweet friends. Uh, share it to your page and uh, that way nobody misses out on it. Okay, so I'm just going to set this off to the side and I have my ice melt melted here. So you can see this is a really pretty shimmery coppery color. That's what we're going to use for our cornucopias today. I'm going to be pulling this first. So I have my former ready. Again, this is just a silicone former from our website. And um, so it's just a cone and because it's silicone, you don't have to grease it or powder it or anything. And it just comes right off of here really quickly and easily. So I'm just going to use that and have that ready to go right next to my workstation. And I'm also going to uh, grab my other silicone mat here. I like to work on that double mat of having the one mat underneath and then one on top because it just helps the airflow, keeps anything from sticking to the mats or anything from getting too hot. So um, I did melt this down. It came to a boil at first, but for pulling, it's not as vital that it comes to a boil. So it's okay that this is getting a little bit cooler and thicker because we're just going to be cooling it down even more on top of what we have um, just been letting it sit in the microwave. So I'm not going to worry about reliquifying this because the cooler it is to start, um, the faster the pulling process will go. Uh, I do have a super in-depth version of pulling a whole tutorial on my YouTube channel. I have an ice melt basic series. So if you want to learn like, the, you know, every little detail about pulling and what you're doing, you can check that out for reference. I'm just going to kind of give you the crash course today. So we have lots of time to work on our actual decorations. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm just folding this. So I'm folding it in different directions and folding in cool air. As this cools, it's going to thicken and all pull together and eventually it will become a clay, and that's what we're going to use to sculpt and shape our cornucopia. Alright, so you can really see the shimmery in that beautiful coppery color here. 
So I'm just going to alternate which ways I'm folding, trying to fold it directly in half. I don't want to kind of just fold part of it or fold too far. I want to completely fold it in half to keep it all consistent, kind of bringing all the edges together. And I like to move this over every few folds as well, because again, that just keeps the table underneath a little bit cool. Sometimes, because silicone has pores like skin, if it insulates too much heat, it can stick to the mat, because the pores open up from uh, the heat, and then they can get dye smoke can get stuck down in them if it's too hot. So I just like to move it around, and you can see it's releasing beautifully so far. Alright. And I'm going a little faster now that it's cooling. You can see that did not take long at all, um, because I started with a little bit thicker isomalt. I didn't worry about melting it all the way down, since we're just going to mix more air into it. Alright. So just folding, folding, folding. Here we go. So once that uh, kind of comes up and you can see it's not sticky anymore, then we can sculpt with it. But I am going to pull a little bit of extra air into there so that it is going to be a slightly firmer texture. Texture is really, really key with this project because you want it to be firm enough to hold its shape and not get a ton of dents or get uneven. Um, of course, the kind of lines and the rows of the wrap of the cornucopia is the sort of iconic look of a cornucopia. It has that woven look. So we want to make sure that they're going to be nice and and concentric and you know consistent as we go down so I want to make sure I do pull this a little bit more than I normally would just to help it cool down now you can work with a heat lamp next to you if you would like to hey Taisha um, I'm not working with a heat lamp today just because I can just re-soften the ice melt in the microwave as it cools but if you're working with a heat lamp it definitely will help to keep everything nice and pliable so it goes a little quicker for you Right, you see how as I'm stretching, I'm folding it in one direction. I'm not twisting it or kneading it because you can see those really pretty lines and striations, especially with a luster color like this. It just really brings out that beautiful stripey look that pulled sugar is supposed to have and is kind of known for. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my scissors and just work with part of this at a time, maybe half of it. All right, and I'm going to start stretching this into a tube. So I'm pulling by the ends, but I'm also looking where it's getting thicker. I don't really roll it too much with my hands because I don't want to cool it too quickly. But every once in a while, I will just go once or twice back and forth to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And now you can pull this as thin as you would like to, but remember, the thinner the tube is, the more wraps you're going to have to do. So if you're a little bit impatient like me, I try not to go any thinner than like maybe my pinky finger or so. It's about the diameter or the um, thickness of one of my fingers. And so I just use that as a guide mark, but if you really wanted to measure, you could. This is probably about a half inch thick. Okay, so I can see that the ends are a tiny bit thicker than the center, so I'm just going to focus my kind of stretching onto the ends here. Okay, stretch over here. And this won't be enough for the whole thing, like I said, but I do have my excess over here that I can re-soften. And now what I'm doing is I'm cooling this. So like I said, texture is really important. You don't want to go too warm with this because then your lines aren't going to be as perfect. So I'm kind of uh, cooling it on purpose now. So like I said, rolling it on the mat is really cooling it down. So you don't want to do that too early. But once you have it in the, f the shape that you want to help to cool it down, I can definitely kind of use that to my advantage. Okay, I'm going to grab my form and just start rolling it. So I do this flat so that I have a nice flat front. And I'm going to wrap it all the way around first, and then I'm just going to go on top of the gap here, so kind of where it overlaps. I'm going to go on top, and then just continue it around and around as many times as I can. Now I do try and plan where those gaps are going to be, so it ended right down here. I have that first end. So I want to either kind of plan so that all of the ends are in that spot by either cutting it if I have a lot of excess. This one just happened to work out, but that does not always happen. Sometimes you have to just cut off the excess. And it's not the end of the world if you have a little end point on the top because you could always cover it with something. Or again, it's supposed to be rustic, so it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect. But I just like to try and plan all of my ends to about the same area so that I can have that as the bottom and nobody really sees that in the finished piece. Okay, You can use a straight edge if you need to to help make sure that those lines are straight. So either a little palette knife or a spatula or a ruler just by kind of pressing it in there and making your indents. But I'm just going to kind of use my hand to cool these a little bit before I make my next piece. 
And look how quick that was. It really doesn't take long, especially with isomalt, to get those really nice, smooth shapes. And they cool into place really quick, which is what I love about isomalt. So I'm going to put that off to the side for a second and re-soften my excess uh, to use for the next rows. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold this excess isomalt into my mat and then put this in the microwave for about five second intervals. You don't want to do too much so that it melts down to a liquid, you just want to soften it and reanimate it a little. I wouldn't do this to cold isomalt, like from the tiles or anything, but if it still has some warmth to it, you definitely can reanimate it because something warm is going to absorb the heat of the microwave a lot faster and easier and more evenly. So if your isomalt, your pulled isomalt still has some warmth to it, you can soften it slightly. But again, I'm not getting it completely back to a liquid, I'm just getting it to a slightly more pliable texture. And because microwaves naturally heat unevenly, you can see that some spots are more liquidy and some spots are a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to fold this again to get it back to an even balanced temperature. And then I'll pull it as needed to get it back to a texture that I like to work with. Hi Becky! Hey Lisa! How's everybody doing? Sandy's here too! Hi Sandy! Alright, so just stretch and fold this a couple of times. You'll need less and less as you go up on the form because it gets smaller and smaller circles, so it uses less and less isomalt. So this should be enough, but I still have a little bit more in my bowl that I could pull again if I needed to. Alright. So just stretching and folding that a few more times, and now I'm going to start stretching this out. So I really plant my fingers and I pull. I make it stretch because I want this to be nice and long. And ice melt when it's warm is very pliable, so you do have a lot of kind of stretchability with this, especially with our ice melt. We specifically make it so that it's going to have a lot of time for you to work with it before it gets too hard and starts cracking. Now, if you're under a vent or it's cooler in your room, again, it may be a little bit faster to cool. But remember, if you have your little chef's blowtorch, you can always go over the whole thing. And I usually do a layer on the front, and then I'll flip it and do a layer on the back. And that will add in some more heat. So if you notice your piece is getting really tough really quick, or you're, um, they're maybe cracking a little bit, you definitely can use the torch to keep everything nice and warm. I kind of put this diagonal because it's going to be longer from corner to corner on this mat. Or if you have multiple mats, you can put them end to end. But because I'm working on a metal table, it's not going to hurt the ice malt in any way. If it touches. All right. Now the end of this one has um, kind of a funky spot. You can see it gets really big on the end here, and it's gotten a little too hard to fix. So I'm going to cut that end off and just throw that back into my liquid bowl to be melted back evenly. That's the beauty of ice melt, there's no waste. So if your pieces don't come out as even as you want them to the first time, it's totally fine. You can just melt them back down and do it again. Okay, now these pieces that I had done first that are on the former right now are already cooled pretty much. Um, they're still a little warm, but they're definitely not soft anymore. So I am going to lightly just torch. As long as you keep moving, you shouldn't hurt the form, but you can take the um, form out to do the step and then put it back on the form to continue shaping. Okay, and then I'm just going to continue right at that spot where I ended the first one. And just make sure that my lines are pushed down against the previous um, little tube that I made so that there's no gaps. And I'm just kind of feeding it into the shape as I go. Sometimes if your tube gets too hard as you're wrapping, you may have to lightly just heat the whole thing and soften it. Remember to give it like five seconds or so before you continue if you use that torch because you want the heat to sink in. And I'm wrapping it pretty tight, but you could do it looser if you wanted this a little bigger. Okay, so you can see that I'm getting to the end now, and I want to make this a slight curved end because that's kind of the look of cornucopias. So I'm going to lightly heat the whole thing to get it slightly more pliable, and I'm going to extend this off the form a little bit. So I'm getting all the way to that top point, but now I'm going to just continue itself. So I'm not trying to get smaller, I'm just twisting and wrapping onto itself and kind of coiling it like an ice cream cone and making it longer than the form. That way I can curve it up a little bit at the end. So just reheating as I go, letting that heat sink in. 
one, right? I could see this like a beehive too, I think. For sure, yeah. You could definitely do a lot of different shapes. You can make cute little beehives. Um, I used this, I, if you saw my post a couple of weeks ago for Halloween, I stretched and formed like a little witch's hat over this. You could turn this into a Santa hat would be super cute. Oh, that would. Okay, so see how I just cut that excess off and I'm going to rewarm it slightly around the outside to make sure that all that heat is sinking in. This excess is going back into my bowl. Alright, just looking at my comments here. Hey Karen, how are you? Becky says she loves the red shimmer. She just got some. Oh, awesome! Yeah, we just came out with a new color today, guys. I have a little video of it to that I'm going to pop up in a second to show you, but it is our new red metallic shimmer. All right, so see how I just kind of curved that end over upwards towards the smooth side. So the side that has some of those gaps goes to the bottom. And if you had any gaps between the lines, like I noticed that I had some little tiny, tiny little gaps between here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's like some little spaces. I'm just pushing that back together and curving my end up. And look how cute that is. It's already pretty much cool, but I'll hold it in front of the fan if, um, for a few seconds to make sure. But it's already done. That's the speed of ice melt that I really love. I'll cool it just to make sure that I can set it down and not worry about it in front of my little fan. You could even warm it slightly or while it's still warm and make a flat spot at the base so that it sits nice and flat and you don't have to worry about it rolling away on you. Super cute. Awesome. Any questions, guys? Hey, Roseanne, how are you? Hi, Diana. Hey, Cindy. Right, so just sending that down. And he is kind of rolly right now. You can see he's rolling around a little bit. So I'm going to not hold things and torch them. I'm going to set it down and maybe prop it up against the mold or something so it doesn't roll away. I'm going to reheat slightly on the bottom. Okay, let's use another mold here. Safety first. And then um, I'm going to reheat the outside and the inside a little to create that flat spot so that it stops moving on me. But remember to let that heat sink in because the torch only heats the surface. So give that a few seconds and then I may even build up one more layer on the outside before we do the inside. What, don't hold it in your hand? Don't hold it in your hand. Um, so Patricia says super cute and make it look easy, but I think this is easy. It really is. I mean, the form kind of takes all the guesswork out of it as far as the, um, you know, shaping and all of that. So really, you know, you can have all that time to concentrate on getting those lines even. But I even think, I mean, it looks cute having those more perfect diameter lines, but wouldn't it be cute to make this a little bit more rough and make them more uneven or maybe wrap multiple layers? So now that I have the first one, if it maybe wasn't the most even thing in the world and I want wanted to distract from it a little, I could pull a skinnier tube or even a more uneven, like really natural looking tube and wrap it around it again and give it that really, really pretty sort of natural woven by hand look. Um, but again, remember these are done by hand just like real ones would be woven by hand. So it gives it that really kind of unique personal touch. Well, going with that, Tenia says, could you use a texture mat on it now? Oh, you absolutely could use a texture mat on it. So you could use like a cool burlap or uh, anything that you wanted, a basket weave even. You just heat the surface up a little bit like I just did to soften it and then just immediately press the silicone mat into it and it would give it a really cool texture. I like that idea. Now you have to do it and post pictures because we all want to see. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so see how I just flattened that base a little bit. So it still looks natural, but it has a slight kind of base to set up on. All right, so we'll cool that guy down for just another second, and then we'll talk about some of our decorations we're going to put into it, and I'll also talk about some other mediums. All right, so I have another one here that I pre-made to show you guys as this is cooling. So this one I made out of cookie, okay? So this is my sculpted gingerbread recipe. I dusted this just to give it a little bit more of a natural look. And you could airbrush it if you wanted to or anything that you want to do. And I just did the exact same thing. My sculpted gingerbread is more of a clay. So you can roll it out into tubes. You can make it into whatever shape that you want. And then I just wrapped it around the form. And because the silicone is high heat to be uh, worked with isomalt, it will work in the oven too. So I actually baked it right on the form. I gave it the little tail. I curved it slightly. And then I baked 
baked it in the oven um, just you know, whatever your recipe is for your sculpted gingerbread or my recipe is available on my website and um, I just baked it right on the form to re maintain that shape and uh, once it was cool I let it cool it fell right off of the form and then you have your cookie so you could fill that in with our sprinkles and our decorations like we're gonna do you could fill it in with more cookies you could fill this with chocolates if you wanted to with other desserts I think that it's just kind of a really really cool um, way to give you some different um, you know medium options if you wanted to make these out of cookie how cool would it be to have this as a cookie that somebody could eat you could make these into like individual place settings and put little icing image um, labels in there for names or you could do like table numbers if you're gonna have a big Thanksgiving dinner um, or Christmas dinner like I said if you filled this with poinsettias or snowflakes or you know cardinal you know little sculpted cardinals would be really pretty for more of a Christmassy theme yeah, it'd be you could super nice it with cake or mousse for sure yeah you could put a filling inside of it you could really do any other medium that you wanted to with it and you can do this same thing out of fondant you could do it out of gum paste you could do it out of modeling chocolate if you wanted to mm -hmm. just by rolling those tubes and wrapping it around the form okay so Beth wants to know yes. did you bake it laying down or standing up I baked it standing up which is why it's a little bit roly-poly but if you wanted to bake it flat you would have that flat base on the bottom so it didn't roll around you could do either way and it would work pretty much the same way um, if you do want to keep some of like the little tips like the tip of his tail and things from baking more than the rest since this would be a very uneven cookie compared to just making flat cookies you definitely cover that with foil so I take a little piece of aluminum foil and make like a little cap or a little hat and just cover it over that and that will protect it from the direct heat so that the edges don't get crispy um, and the center can bake more evenly that way with the edges. Would you remove the foil at the end? Uh, once it comes out, once it cools, I would, yeah. It would just kind of set on top. It wouldn't really be flush to it. It would just be a little cover um, just to cover it up from the direct rays of the heat. All right, loving all these ideas, guys. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so that is our base of our cornucopia. Now we're going to make some little decorations for it. Um, we're going to use some sprinkles, but we're also going to make some handmade pieces as well. So I'm going to switch back to my Silpat mat here. Okay. I am going to grab a little bit of fondant. You could, again, make these out of whatever medium you wanted to. You can bake cookies right in this mold as well, because all of our silicone molds are high heat. So you can bake cookies right in there and make little cookie decorations. You can make these out of fondant like I'm going to be doing. You can make them out of modeling chocolate, gum paste, whatever you like. Or, of course, you could pipe little decorations, little royal icing transfers, or you can, um, you know, really fill this with whatever you wanted to. If you wanted to get the pre-made um, decorations, like the bigger sprinkles that you can get, that would be super cool and quick and easy as well. But you guys know I like to make things custom, so we're going to put these into the mold and then paint them up a little bit. Okay, so this mold, I really love this mold. It has some pretty flowers, some pumpkins, corn cobs, and some um, leaves as well. So we're just going to take a little bit of satin ice fondant. Satin ice is my favorite fondant to use. You can mix this with some Tylos too if you wanted to, but I'm just going to put these right in and just kind of size it to each one of the cavities. And Brooke made it. generally, yay! Hi, Brooke. Generally, um, with these, I don't have to grease them or powder them or anything because they are silicone and they pop out really easily. But if it was a really humid day, you definitely could put a little bit of cornstarch in the mold or on your fondant pieces first, however you like to do it. Another um, tip that I'll do with these is sometimes I will uh, freeze these. So I'll put all the paste in the mold, I'll freeze it, and then pop them out, and that way they're hard. And I just let them get back to room temperature before I were to paint them or um, put them on my piece or anything like that. But that way they don't warp or stretch or anything. So we'll see, depending on the humidity of today, if we need to pop these in the freezer or not to take them out. So see how I'm not really worrying what the backs are looking like, so if I don't have enough, I'll just kind of smush some more in there, or if I have too much, I'll just pull some out. And I'm just pressing those into each of the cavities. And I'm doing these all in white, but of course you could do a base color. We are going to paint these, so even if I did a base color, I would most likely paint them afterwards just to add a little bit of shading. Hey Sandra, how are you? Good afternoon. Oh, <laughs> you can see they just want to pop right out on my finger. You can use a little bit of cornstarch or um, vegetable shortening on your fingers, too, if your fingers are sticky, if you have warmer hands, or are in a more humid climate like I am. And I want to save time, so I just do all of them at the same time, even when I'm just working by myself, because time is money, right? But again, modeling chocolate works great in these. You could even do poured chocolate in these if you wanted to. Okay, so I have all my cavities filled. 
And let's see if they want to pop out or if we're going to freeze them. I think probably will come right out here. Okay, so I'm just being very gentle with them, pulling them right out of the mold. And then because they are still pliable, I can tweak them. I'm going to grab a paper towel to put them on because sometimes they like to stick to the silicone and it's hard to get them up until they're hard. And we want to paint these, so I'm just going to lay them out on my paper towel here. Let's see, who wants to come out next? We'll do our little pumpkins. I love these little pumpkins. I just think that they're so cute. All right. What do you guys think? What other fall decorations would you put in here? Maybe little desserts. There we go. You can use them like an edible bowl and fill them with like gelato or ice cream would be really yummy. Especially the cookie one. Yeah, especially the cookie one. That's right. All right, so just pulling our little corn cobs out, our other little tall pumpkin. And because these are all one color right now, plus they're on a white paper towel, you can't really see the detail. But once I paint these, they're going to come out super duper cute. Brooke says tiny cupcakes. Tiny cupcakes. Oh my gosh, a little mini cupcake in the middle of each one would be so cute. All right. Okay. Some fun buttercream on the top of that. For sure, yeah. Or you could add some like snow to the top of it too, with a little bit of buttercream or royal icing. All right. Set my satin icer right down in there. Swipe off my hands to make sure I don't have any grease on them. Can you freeze? Roseanne would like to know. Can you freeze an ice malt ornament? Um, I try not to put the ice malt in the fridge or the freezer because the moisture and condensation when you take it out can really affect it um, since ice malt is a little bit more sensitive to moisture uh, than other sugar mediums. So I, I wouldn't. I would keep it out and then put it on your cake or your um, project at the last second after you take it out and let it come to room temperature. But um, depending on the humidity level of your fridge or freezer, because some people have more of the like commercial um, no humidity freezers, you can experiment with it. I think it also depends on your climate too and the temperature of the room that you're taking it out into so um, you can experiment with it a little bit but I generally recommend not to I know at least in Florida I definitely don't want to all right so we have our little decorations here we're gonna let those dry for a minute while I mix up some paints that we're gonna use so we are going to of course be using our see me color splash colors today these are a water-based color so they're basically an airbrush color but they're super highly intensely pigmented so that they are going to be really really bright and intense and you don't need very much they can go through an airbrush they can be mixed into isomalt mixed into buttercream and royal icing but today we're going to be hand painting them now all the colors, um, there's six different colors, and then there's also the dilution solution, which is clear to thin out the colors. Um, all the colors are gonna be see-through. They're gonna be a transparent, like a traditional airbrush color. So it's good for mixing in or getting watercolor effects and keeping that clear color. But we are going to be using our base white mixed with our paints today because it's a little bit thicker of a texture, actually a lot thicker of a texture. It's almost more like a very loose acrylic paint. And so by mixing it with these, you could do either. If you want more of a watercolor look, you could use the colors by itself or if you want to mix it with the base white it gives you a little bit easier time painting on um, so depending on the look you're going for you can kind of experiment with it but I like to mix mine with the base white as long as I'm okay with them turning opaque because the base white will turn all the colors opaque but since we're painting on white anyway that's kind of what we want all right so first off we'll put a little bit of the seamy yellow we're gonna mix up a couple different colors a little bit of the seamy yellow Mixed with a few drops of our base white, and depending on the thickness and the texture you want, you can kind of play around. I'm doing about a 50-50 ratio for these. And let's see what other colors are we going to need. We're going to need some green, so I'll put some base white into here and add some green to it. And they are all water-based, even the white, even though it's so thick, it's just all of that pigment in there is making it so intense. Now if you wanted still more of a transparent watercolor look but you wanted the colors a little lighter since these are so highly concentrated, you can use the dilution solution instead. So the dilution solution is clear and so it would thin out the color of the colors, like the tone of the colors, but it wouldn't actually turn them opaque. So if you wanted to keep that like stained glass sort of look, you definitely can use that instead. Okay, we're gonna do some orange for our pumpkins. Okay. And we'll 
we'll use the oranges and the yellows for the leaves as well, and then we'll probably need some brown. Now, we don't actually have brown in the Simi Color Splash right now, but with all of the kits, they come with a color mixing guide that I created for these specific colors. So it comes um, with ways to make black, brown, purple, pink, any shade that you can imagine, and um, just some tips and tricks for coloring. Uh, now, coloring in is going to be, or mixing color into isomalt or into a medium is different than hand painting. So um, I have two different sets, depending on if you're painting it on top or mixing it in, because the way the light is going to reflect will look different. So I'm going to be using my airbrushing and hand painting um, ratio for the brown today, which is going to be three drops of red and one drop of green. So let's see, let's find our red. We'll do it over here so I remember which one is the brown. So one, two, three drops of red and then one drop of envy green. And then we'll mix a tiny bit of the base white in there as well. All right, now we'll start mixing. So let's do our little sunflowers first. I love our sunflowers here. So we'll do our yellow. So you see that's going to turn a little bit lighter as it mixes with the white. Okay. And we'll just paint a little bit of that on. It doesn't take very much. And because they are so concentrated with a lot of pigment, they dry really quickly. So if you wanted to layer colors, uh, dep again, depending on your humidity, even in high humidity Florida here, uh, it only takes maybe 10 minutes for it to be tacky and dry enough to layer colors, which is really nice. So if you're in a more dry climate, it will for sure take less time than that. Just depends on your kitchen. It was really nice here in Utah. It was very nice to not have all that humidity. But, you know, we work with what we got. Okay, so just painting that on. And these paint onto um, fondant, they paint onto gum paste, they paint onto isomalt, they'll even paint onto modeling chocolate, even though they're a water-based color. Um, they won't really paint that well onto poured chocolate because it's a very slick surface, but modeling chocolate's a little more porous because it has that corn syrup in it, so it kind of mixes and bonds with the water in the corn syrup, and it actually sticks really well. So I use these for modeling chocolate as well. Um, let's see, we'll do a little bit of yellow for our corn here. And this is just one coat, and you can see how bright and vivid those colors are. I won't even really need a second coat unless you really wanted to build up the intensity of the color. Now, painting on isomalt's a little different because isomalt's like glass. It doesn't really um, absorb color that quickly. So sometimes you have to do a couple coats in order to get your really intense, um, intense shades and coverage. Okay, so now we will use our, let's do our green, so that base white and the envy green. Mix that up and we'll use that for the husks on the corn as well as the little um, stems on the pumpkins. Do the pumpkins first and let that corn sit for a minute to dry. Okay, and I mixed all my colors beforehand because I kind of had an idea of what I was going to do, but you can definitely mix as you go as well. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit into just like the stem of the leaves too, and we'll kind of blend that in with some browns and yellows and things because those are usually a little bit more of like a watercolory sort of look. So we'll do some blending with that in a second. Um, now let's go ahead and do our. Oh, I forgot our little stems here, or our little husks. Do those next. And you can build on this if you really like painting and you want to do some shading. Ah! Stuck to my sunflower. You can um, build on this with, of course, some browns and some yellows and just build up those different shading elements into each piece. It's kind of up to you how simple or much that you want to do with these, but I'm just going to keep it simple today since we just have a little bit of time here, plus... There's lots of different ways you could go about it, depending on what color variations you want. And even with the corn, like there's different colors of corn, right? You could do purple corn. You could do that really pretty multicolored corn. So it really depends on what you want to do and what colors you layer on. Okay. All right, so now we will do a little bit of our orange for our pumpkins. So just mixing that up with that base white. And I did about a one-to-one -one ratio of the white to the colors. So of course, if you wanted it paler, you can do a little bit paler or a little bit uh, more white to less of your color or vice versa. You can add more 
If you wanted to tone down the colors, you can add a little bit of browns or blacks, which you can mix as needed. But I wanted some nice bright colors, kind of go for a very bright, happy Thanksgiving look here. Okay. So just painting that orange onto each of our pumpkins. And these are 3D, so it'll naturally have a little bit of shading to it. But if you wanted to go back with that brown in like the lines for the pumpkins, or even just mix some of the brown with the orange, I wanted these to be really customizable, so you don't have to have 800 different bottles of different shades of color. You can actually mix your own. All right, and that's why I made the color mixing guide too, just to give you kind of a start. And I also have lots of videos too on using the color splash so far, and I'm adding to it pretty much every week now, or at least every month, with some new versions. Okay, so just adding a little bit of that orange on. And then finally, we will do some onto our flowers and then uh, the centers of the, um, or onto the leaves and then the centers of our flowers. So I'm going to paint first with some yellow all over these leaves. Evelyn said that the color's going on so nice on the fondant. Oh, yeah, thank you. I really, really love how they look on fondant because they dry a little bit um, matte. And then if you wanted them shiny, you could spray them with the glaze. It really is with that base white especially, it just makes everything paint on smoothly because it has enough body to it that it doesn't get streaky. But if you wanted that kind of streaky, more um, like artistic sort of look, you can leave the colors by themselves too without that base white. And Will wants to know how are you doing? I'm doing great! <laughs> how are you, Will? Yeah, how are you? Hopefully we'll get to see you again soon. All right, so we're going to let that yellow set up for a second while we do the brown in the centers of our flowers. So I mixed that brown and then the white in there. So just stirring that up. It's a pretty dark brown right now, but I think that'll contrast really nicely with the yellow in the flowers. I accidentally painted some yellow over the center of the sunflower. I don't know if you can see from camera angle, but it just covers right up with that next color. And because that base white is in there, even if the next color was lighter than it, you would actually still be able to cover it up. So, like, I just got a tiny dot of brown on the outside of the flower. In a second, once that dries, I can just go back over it with the yellow and correct back and forth until I have that perfect shape. Okay, and with the color mixing guide, too, you can tweak this. So, I made this, I like generally a little bit cooler toned browns. So, if you wanted a little warmer toned, you can add a little bit more red or a little bit more yellow. There's infinite shades, right, in different colors. Just write them down. Yeah, write them down so you remember, because you're always going to mix that perfect color and then never remember how to recreate it, or at least that's me. So I always try and keep a pad of paper next to my work area for any notes I need to take as I go. <laughs> and Will's on his way to Omnigrove. Oh, that's so exciting! To enter his piece! Yay! I cannot wait to see pictures after the weekend is over. This weekend, guys, is the um, gingerbread competition at the Omni Grove Park Inn. Some really, really incredible pieces are always entered there, so I can't wait to see this year. Okay, so I just touched up that little bit of yellow to um, clean it up, and then I'm going to add some orange to the edges of the leaves and kind of down the centers of them. And I may even add a little bit of brown, too, to the edges just to make them look a little bit more realistic. And I'm going kind of, you know, faster and a little bit more impressionistic than I normally would. But you guys kind of get the idea of adding in the different colors and shading and shading and shading until you're happy with it. I'll hold these up in a second so you can see them a little bit more up close, too. So I'm layering some of the orange over the green just to dull it out and kind of cancel out the green a little to make it more cohesive. And then I'll take a little bit of that brown, just a little, on some of the edges of the leaves to kind of make them pop. I didn't even add any more onto my brush, I'm just kind of using what I had, maybe just a tiny bit more for the centers. Alright, add some of the little veining.
Okay. Maybe I'll take just a tiny bit with my brush and just go over my pumpkin lines, like I was saying, to add a little bit of a roughness, a little more rustic look to them. You guys know I love shading, so anything I can kind of do to add some depth to my pieces, I will do. I'm going to go over those leaves one more time with a clean brush. Slightly firm clean brush just to mix the colors together a little bit more and add kind of a dappled look since the leaves tend to be very dapply in person. So just want to blend those all together. Okay, and you could go in with some reds and things like that too, depending on the different tones you want in yours, but let me hold those up a little closer so you can see I have a board back here. So we got our little pumpkins, we got our little flowers, or corn. It was so cute. And our little marbleized leaves there. We'll let those dry for a minute as we fill our cornucopia with our sprinkles. Any more questions, guys? I'm just looking over. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we'll let those dry off to the side for a second. Put this guy here on my board so that I can fill him with some sprinkles. Now, of course, the sprinkles are up to you what you would like to fill it with. Or again, you don't have to use sprinkles, but even if you add some decorations in, I feel like the sprinkles add a nice bed to either your chocolates, your cupcake, whatever it is, just to fill out some space. Now, if you're going to um, keep this for, you know, any amount of time, you want to spray this, of course, with your clear edible glaze spray before you start adding in all your sprinkles and things because they'll just blow away when you glaze it. So I spray it with the clear edible glaze spray and just make sure that it's going to be nice and sealed from any moisture and humidity before we go ahead and keep it. And uh, so, yeah, that just locks out the moisture in the air. Even if you're in a dry climate, I do recommend this because a lot of big venues that we would be delivering cakes and um, decorations to are going to um, use swamp coolers and pump in humidity to make it a little more comfortable. So I recommend this even if you're in a more dry climate just because it really helps uh, just be like your little secret weapon to make sure everything is foolproof. So I would give that a spray, not near any of your tools or anything because it doesn't like to come off very easy, but it is edible. So I just give it a spray on like a, I have a little table, table that I have covered in plastic. And I'm going to use the sprinkles that I uh, had come in the accessory kit. So if you got the accessory kit for this project, um, you'll have your little sprinkles here that you can fill it. But of course, you could use whatever you like. And I'm just going to kind of fill some in and then sprinkle some out in front. I might use the back of a little paintbrush or a tool to make sure they go to the back of the cornucopia, make it look nice and plentiful. And then I'm going to grab my little decorations. They're not quite dry yet, I would, of course let them dry a little longer, but just place those here and there in the finished piece. All right, just checking my comments. Hey, Mark. Hey, Desi. How you guys doing? All right. Just kind of thinking of color here and where I want everything to go, and they kind of blend in nicely with our sprinkles, which I like because it's kind of like you have to hunt for them. A little pumpkin. Over here, he's a little sticky right now because it is raining out. And let's just move these over here. There we go. So I would just place those in there and then um, leave them. But if you wanted to cement them more down in, you could. I would probably, instead of using all sprinkles, I would do a bed of like fondant or ice melt or something and then cover it with piping gel piece, you know, place whatever uh, bigger pieces I want in first and then just fill in around it with a thin layer of sprinkles, if that makes sense. That way they're all more cemented down if you're going to be moving around with this. Um, but this one uh, I'm just going to keep as a display so you can see it. Ah, sprinkles from the top first, but I'm going to turn this up so you guys can see it from the side because I think that'll be a little bit easier to see. Hi again. Make sure I think you spring. should have a bowl of ice cream next to it and pour all your sprinkles from your cornucopia. Oh, down. I love that. Here, let's tilt this down a little bit. That would be so awesome. Right, and there we go. So you can see our little cornucopia. I'm trying not to let the sprinkles go all over the place here. Let's tilt it down here. All right, so we have all of our little sprinkles. We have our ice melt cornucopia, and then we have our pretty little fall decorations in the center of it. And the little balls. <laughs> and the little sprinkles rolling everywhere. But of course, if you guys stick them down properly and don't just pour them in, they will stick nicely. 
Ta-da! What do you guys think? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I loved all the ideas of all the different things to put into these. I think it would be so cool. Or even like I said, if you wanted to do like table markers, um, if you're going to have multiple tables for your Thanksgiving or your Christmas uh, celebration, you could put little icing image banners in them, make them all cute, put either name tags in each one and have everybody have one to take home. Um, remember, you can flavor these too, so if you want them to be kind of like a big hard candy piece um, for them to eat or um, little bits at a time of, uh, because it is a fairly big piece, you could definitely flavor it with oil-based flavorings. If you wanted to add even more shading over these, you could go back and paint the cornucopia itself uh, with anything sticky. We'll stick to it. So the airbrush colors, you can airbrush it instead of hand painting it. You can also use dusts, um, luster dust or petal dust mixed with alcohol. You can use edible acrylic paints. Um, you can shade them even more if you wanted to add more depth between the ridges or anything like that, kind of like I did with the cookie version. Um, or again, make these out of chocolate, modeling chocolate, make them out of fondant, make them out of gum paste, make them more as more of a keepsake. Um, if you spray these with the glaze, they will stay good for a really long time. So so um, you can see some of the pieces I have back here I made in lots of different projects. We have Frank over here. He is in the Christmas spirit right now with his little uh, hat and display over here. So uh, you can really keep pieces nice for a long time with your glaze. Um, but of course, if it's for Thanksgiving, that's in just a few days. All right, I'm just going to refresh my comments down here. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad you guys like it. Do you have any other questions or anything about the piece? Uh, let me know in the comments. Or again, if you're watching the replay, feel free to send me a private message or comment on the YouTube too. I check that as well. Um, before you guys go, I want to show you a couple of sneak peeks for our next projects because I'm so excited about these. Um, so I'm going to put some pictures up on my screen really quick. Um, so first off, I like to give you guys a little sneak peek of what our next live stream project is going to be because I do one of these every single month. So if you had fun, uh, come back and join us. Maybe get the accessory kit or use what you have and join along and work along with us next time. Um, if you did work along today, also make sure to tag me in pictures if you post them or post them in the See Me Torch team group. We have our Facebook group, which is so much fun to see everybody's pieces, especially after lives and classes um, to see everybody's individual twist on them. Um, but our next play date is going to be in December, so of course it is going to be a Christmas theme. Uh, we have our See Me Ice Melt Play Date live stream. It's going to be Ice Melt and Chocolate Christmas Ornaments. Woohoo! So uh, I'm really excited about this one. You can see I made a couple different versions. One's going to be an ice melt and one is going to be in chocolate. I have the piece. I'm going to grab that really quick to show you. Da, da, da. I'm just walking over to my little photo area over here so I can grab the pieces to show you. So I'm going to show you a version in isomalt that's going to be really lightweight, really shiny and sparkly that you can actually hang. You can see it's hanging there on an individual um, hanger. Or you can make these out of chocolate. They can be solid, but it can also be done as a hot cocoa bomb. You can make it hollow. You can see we're going to use our dollop mold there. And um, I'll grab that too to show you guys, but I'm going to switch that off. Uh, but that is going to be on Friday, December the 10th at 2 p.m. EST. So if you want to join us, here is our isomalt ornament. You can see I went super crazy with the glitter because I just think glitter at the holidays is the best combination. So we have our glittery ornament and we also have our chocolatey ornament. Let me see if I can get the lighting to change milk maybe not i'll just pull it back farther but i have our cute little bows on there you can make these into hot cocoa bombs they fit perfectly into your mug or you can make them into hot tea bombs with ice malt because it'll dissolve into that hot water and then we're going to use our dollop mold the dollop mold is kind of new we've been using it for some of our air casting projects and things but uh, it works really really beautifully for christmas ornaments so i really wanted to turn it into a really pretty um, kind of classic ornament so that is on our website now we just put it on there and the accessory kits if you want to follow along the next playdate project with me of creating them on december 10th um, is available as well plus we are using our brand new ice malt color our brand new ice malt color i did a little teaser yesterday and then just about an hour ago um, or like a half hour before i started i posted the new color uh, you guys had some really good guesses and we actually came up um, or got a lot of ideas from you guys' guesses of future colors. Um, but it is our brand new shimmery red. It's a little bit hard to see in the tiles themselves how pretty this color is because they have a lot of texture and things. But when you're making really pretty smooth decorations, I have a video actually to show you guys. I think I can play a video on here. Let me see if I can get it to play. There we go. Uh, here. So you can actually see the shimmer in it. It's so shimmery and smooth and shiny and um, it's just really, really uh, such a pretty color. I'm so, so, so happy with it. Um, we developed it just for the holidays. It's actually a uh, special edition color. It's only going to be available for a limited time. So you are definitely want to get that while it is here. Um, it's going to be perfect for the holidays, perfect for Christmas, um, for Valentine's Day coming up. Um, so it is only going to be available for a limited time. So make sure you grab that. 
um, and it's actually perfect timing because we just launched our Black Friday deal as well. It's going to be going on from today onwards through uh, Cyber Monday next week, so um, you have a little bit of time, but if you use the code THANKS20, um, and I posted that on my page as well, so you can just copy and paste it, um, you'll actually get 20% off any 6-ounce bag of isomalt from our website, seemecakes.com. So definitely take advantage of that. It's only going to be here through Cyber Monday, so stock up for any Christmas projects you're going to be doing, any New Year's projects you're going to be doing, um, and beyond, because uh, we generally do uh, ice malt sales, uh, you know, like for Black Friday. We don't do a ton of them in between other than the kits and things. So make sure that you stock up on that, because it is definitely going to be a good deal of the year. Patricia had a great question. Yes. How much ice malt did it take to do the cornucopia? And I just weighed yours. Thank you. <laughs> it's uh, 2.4 ounces. So if you're more heavy handed, you know, maybe three ounces. Perfect. So you could get like two to three of them out of your six ounce bag of ice malt. I would say. If you did it thinner. Yeah. If you did it thinner, exactly. You could definitely get um, for sure three of them. So yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Awesome. So you have a little bit, and remember you can remelt it too. So if you're practicing it and you want to make a new one, if you didn't like the first one as much, um, just as you're practicing, you know, and the first one never comes out exactly how you want, um, you can remelt it too. So that gives you a lot of leeway as well. Um, and then speaking of the new year, I have my next Zoom project that I'm going to be doing. Um, I don't have a picture for you guys yet. I am working on it. It will be out very, very, very soon. And I'm really excited because we're going to do a New Year's theme um, because I have a lot of Christmas uh, classes online as well. Um, but I wanted to do something New Year's themed because it is the Roaring 2020s after all. So we are going to be doing um, this on the 29th. I wanted to give you guys a little save the date because I know it is getting closer to Christmas and everything. So um, we we are going to be doing it on the 29th. I did a poll in the Simi Torch team to kind of see how this would work for everybody in between Christmas and New Year's um, because I just wanted to see like, you know, what is everybody going to be doing? Are you going to be away, home? And um, everybody pretty much said that they are going to be around. Um, and remember, you can always get the replay because everybody who signs up will um, also receive a high quality tutorial pre-recorded. Come back, come back. Okay, should be on. <laughs> Again, hopefully everybody refreshes. I have no idea what that was. Did you have to start a new I one? I started a new one, yeah. All right, let's see if it's coming up again. Here we go. Switch back to me. Is anybody out there? Hello, hello. Hopefully everybody refreshes. Are you still on that video? Maybe you can write in the comments to refresh. Hello. Oh, a couple people are on. Hi, hi, hi. I have no idea what happened. It just popped off for a second. It didn't even say connection error. It just said settings or something like that. Um, couldn't be connected. Hello again. Hello, hello. I'll wait a second. Hopefully everybody refreshes the page and comes back on. I hate it when it does that. Technology never does what you want it to, does it? Hey, Sharon. Hey, Matthew. Hi, Avis. Hi. I'm back. Okay, Emily, yeah, you found us again. I don't know what happened. It just popped off for some reason. It all of a sudden said that you're not live anymore, so who knows? <laughs> I'll wait a second for everybody to come back on, and then we'll keep going. Do, 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 do. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, hopefully everybody will refresh, come back technology, on. Technology, you know. I know, that crazy technology. Hi, Desi! If anybody's seeing this for the first time, um, I was just doing a live stream. You can find it. It's on replay on, on my page. But for some reason, it popped me off. But I just made our super cute ice and milk cornucopia. Um, I can't really tilt it because of the sprinkles. But we did our ice milk cornucopia today. It's all in that um, video previous that's on my page. Plus, I'll have it on the YouTube as well um, within the next couple of days. Hi, guys. Okay, I'm glad you're back. Okay, good. Um, like I was saying, we're doing our next Zoom class. Um, that is going to be on the, I'll pop this up again, the save the date is going to be for the 29th, so right between Christmas and uh, New Year's, and uh, that's going to be at 12 p.m. That one is a Zoom, so you have to sign up to reserve your spot on my website. We'll have them so you can just take the class, or we'll have them with the accessory kit as well. So um, I'm working on that. I promise I will have a project and a picture for you guys, um, hopefully within the next couple of days um, to a week, and I'll have that. It's going to be really fun. We have some really cool ideas um, and some brand new molds that we're going to be coming out with to go with it as well, because you know we have to. So. Um, yeah, that's going to be the 29th. Make sure you save the date, and we'll have more info on that coming out very, very soon. Okay, good. It looks like everybody is jumping back on. I see lots of likes and hearts. Hello again. Hello. I don't know what happened. It just popped me off. Um, okay, good. 
So um, we also have our bingo coming up as well too, guys. Mm -hmm. In the Torch team, we always do a uh, game night every month. So this month is going to be holiday baking bingo. We've done bingo a few times, and it is so much fun. You guys get so into it. I love it. And um, this time we're going to do a holiday baking twist on it. So um, I'll make another post about that in the next few days as it gets closer. But if you are in the See Me Torch team group, if you're not, you could just search it and join. Um, it's in the pinned post or like the featured post at the top. You can find the link to generate your online bingo card and um, all the rules and everything um, of this slide are on there too. But basically you just get a bingo card, you bookmark the page so you can come back to it. And then um, we will, me and mom will go live on the 28th at 7 p.m. EST. And uh, that way we can, it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving and we will be calling the numbers and giving away some fun prizes. So eat some uh, leftovers exactly. and join us. Exactly. And we have some really fun prizes this yes. month too. Um, we were just at Cake International in CI, right? Yeah. So in the UK, so we brought back some really, really fun prizes for the bingo night so make sure you don't miss it again that's on the 28th and it's totally free just have to join the see me torch team uh, to get the live stream we'll be calling the numbers on the 28th and yeah all the info and the link to generate your card is on the torch team all right well thank you guys so much for jumping back on here sorry about that <laughs> jumping off for some reason but we have everything um, is all available for replay so if you're just jumping on now or if you want to see the replay it's all going to be on my Facebook page for good you can go back and watch it anytime and I take all these videos and I put them on my YouTube and I make a whole playlist so it's easier to find them um, rather than searching through Facebook posts so if you want to check those out um, they're all online Definitely. of all my past projects the accessory kit for this project and the next project are both still on my website now so you can um, look at those if you want to get the exact molds and ice molds and everything that I use this one came with the sprinkles and all of that so you kind of have it all together and again if you wanted to change this up for like a Christmas theme I still think it'd be really really pretty too to do individual pieces or Santa hat you can make a cute little cartoony Santa hat Definitely. out of it too and just flip it over it would be super cute all right thank you guys so much for watching I don't think there's any final questions remember you can message me any questions that you have hopefully I will see you at bingo night and my next live stream and thank you so so much for coming I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one Can't bye wait. guys bye everybody